Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we are working on page five. And let me pull in page four. So page five is going to be a mirror image of page four, which we have this nice little um, turn in or um, hidden card inside. And um, we're going to start, hopefully this goes a little smoother since I've already done one. I always learn something. We're going to start by putting in these two bands on either side. Each one of these strips is one inch wide. And we're going to lay it on each side. And I've already put a tick mark at the one inch because that's where we're going to add some flaps and pockets. So go ahead and add a one inch tick mark, top and bottom, on left and right. And it's upside down. And this is actually page five. It says page four, but it's really page five. Okay, so we're going to add these left and right. I'm going to put these two strips together to make sure that they're going in the same direction. <clears throat> Take off my sweater. Ouch. I bumped my elbow on my, on my board here. Okay, so here we go. Remember, these are one inch wide, which means when we inset for, um, this is at one inch, this is one inch wide, but when we in, inset for the border, it's going to be just over your one inch line. And that's what we want because we're going to inset the flap and pocket one inch, and we want this strip to be slightly underneath it. Okay, I've got too much glue. Clean that up a little. There we go. That looks good. Let's clean up. Now we're going to do the other side. And I like to rotate it around so that it, it is closest to me. I'm going to make sure both of these are going in the same way. Oops. Okay. There we go. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is add our pocket. And our pocket is going to go toward the spine. So this is page five. So there's a spine here and page four over here. So we're going to add this just like so. Now, one of the things I mentioned on the first um, page four was once you add your tape to this half inch score, make sure there's no extra paper by either adding additional tape or trimming it down. I chose to trim it down. So this is a half inch score line and three eighths inch tape and I just cut off that little bit of tape that was left over. Okay, the overall dimensions are three and a half by nine, three and a half by nine, and you're gonna score three of the four sides, and it's gonna go in like so. Now, normally I take off all the tape and lay it down all together, but we're just gonna lay down the bottom first, and you'll see why in just a moment. Okay, now we're looking for those little tick marks, which should be just past the design paper. Got a little something on my tape. It's probably a little bit of glue for my fingers. So you want to add your, your pocket to those tick marks and you should be just slightly overlaying your designer paper. That looks good. Okay. So we're going to burnish that into place and then we're going to, and the reason I only did this one side first, is we're going to add a piece of tape over here to um, keep it nice and smooth. Part of this pocket um, is to house this card that's going to slip inside based on the flap over here and I want to make sure it doesn't get stuck on this hinge. Now you can use scotch tape. Um, 
or any thin tape that you have. It doesn't, it, you don't need double sided tape. So I am going to use the, um, the new black tape that we're carrying, this construction tape, which is from My Creative Spirit uh, over in England. And we are just now starting to carry it here. I'm getting, just starting to get used to it. I'm gonna have some tutorials on it, but I don't just yet. But if you go to our tips and techniques, there's a video from um, Claire Cheval, who um, is the developer of this tape, and um, she's the one that we're dealing with over here in the United States. She's got some really good tutorials on how to use this tape. So I'm gonna do this, I'm overlapping my flange here and I'm gonna burnish this all into place. So anything I stick into the pocket should go smoothly over this interface here. This tape is really easy to tear with the tape tear tool um, and it's very thin. It's th much thinner than um, like a regular masking tape. Okay, now we're ready to put down the sides. My puppy dog is in here laying on the floor, which I like. I got a little problem with my corner on one side, so. Okay, there we go. So there's our pocket. All nice. And then we have a large flap that's gonna go on the right hand side. Sorry, I've moved things around. And, okay. So this flap is six and a half by eight. Six and a half by eight. And I need to add some tape. Okay, now originally we put those little one inch tick marks. That's where we're going to lay this flap. Line that up. Right down. There we go. Okay. So that, we're done with um, the major part of this. We are gonna add some magnets. So I'm going to put, quickly put a reference line. And for whatever, we, here it is. I was gonna say whatever reason, I don't see my pencil. So I close my flap, I'm gonna draw a line, and then I know my magnet has to reside somewhere between the edge of the pocket and that line. And the closer I get to the line, the closer I'll be to this edge. So I'm going to, did I say that right? No, I got it wrong. The closer I am to this line, yeah, the, the, the further out I'll be. So I'm gonna go as close to center as possible. And I'm gonna use a white tape to hold it in place and to also soften the edges. And I mentioned it before, but the other reason I like to do this is the glue doesn't like to dry on top of the magnet. So you really kind of have to hang on to it for a while because it's not absorbent and um, sometimes it'll create a bow and a gap in your designer paper, especially if it's close to the edge. So that's one of the reasons, or a couple of the reasons, I like uh, to cover it with this white tape. Okay. Here we go. That's done. Okay, so we're gonna set all this aside for a moment, and we're going to pull in the inner mechanism. So there's two pieces of paper for the inner mechanism, and that's not one of them. <laughs> it should be, I dropped it, I think. No, here we go. You should have one that is seven, seven by seven. You're gonna score a half inch, seven by seven. This piece is six and a half by seven, six and a half by seven. 
So on the seven by seven, you're gonna score a half inch, tuck it under. On the six and a half by seven, you're gonna have a score line at one inch. You're gonna rotate it around. It's gonna get applied to the outside edge of this flap, just like so, okay? So everything below the score line is gonna go here. Now this, once it's finished, is gonna operate like a card. So I'm gonna go ahead and burnish um, uh, burnish the score line because it's going to operate like this. It's going to open like that. Okay. So add some glue. Did I say that right? No, it's going to open like that. Sorry. I did it backwards. Here's your half inch score with the tape. Here's your one inch score. It's gonna get married to the end of this flap, just flush. Okay, once you get this installed, look and see if everything is lining up. If you've got um, parts that are overhanging, go ahead and put it, throw it in your trimmer and, and clean that up. Mine look like they're lining up nicely. So now I'm gonna burnish this into place. Squeezed out a little extra glue. Okay, and so when you're done, it should look like this. Look like this. You can also use tape here if you want. Okay, half inch, and then on this one, one inch score line. We get married together. Now this is going to get installed here. So the way this is gonna work is this one inch flange is gonna scoot inside this pocket. This is gonna get installed here, but we're not gonna do that before we put some designer paper down. So let's find our designer paper. Which I have right here. And it's not inked. Let's dry fit it, so it's gonna go here. We'll dry fit in ink. I'm using mahogany. Check your orientation. Your flap should be opening up to the um, right, away from the spine. There we go, it's beautiful. Too much glue, again. I mentioned it before, but I just refilled my um, glue and I'm pressing too hard when I flip it over. Very good. Okay, so that's done. This is gonna go here. And it looks like I've already inked it, so that's good. Should just dry fit it. Hmm. That looks pretty good. Usually if you come in about a quarter, a quarter of an inch from the edge of your designer paper, 
when you go to lay it down and burnish it, um, you've got enough room for the glue to scoot out without coming up from under it. But for some reason, I can't seem to figure out the right combination today. But that's a pretty good rule of thumb. You go too close to the edge, and every time you lay it down, you're going to have glue, glue squeeze out. Okay, that's looking pretty darn good. There we go. Okay, um, here's the paper that I chose. Oh, I have failed to mention that these are from the 8x8. This is from the Patterns and Solids, and this is from the 12x12 collection. And this looks like the right orientation. I'm going to um, try fit it, and it looks really good, and I think I've already inked it, so this should be good to go. And I can tell that's going to be way too much. So I'm just going to push it into the middle. Stop squishing so hard. Okay, there we go. I really like this paper, all of it, but... Um, you probably, if you've been on the channel for a while, have figured out that my most favorite pages uh, wind up in the middle of the book <laughs> um, for some reason. I just sort of design from the inside out, from the paper, not necessarily from the flap design, but from the distribution of color. Okay. And because there's such sharp contrast in the graphic, like this black and yellow and red, it's really easy to, to design from the center out. On uh, collections that are a little bit more muted or, um, what's the word, not monotone, but where there's a lot more of the same colors or just variations of a color, different shades of blue or whatever, it's, it's not as important. Okay, so there you go. We've got the top monochromatic, that was the word I was looking for. Um, and we've got most of the inside down. Now, once we get the, the card mechanism put in, what you realize is that part of each of the sides show. So we're gonna do a one inch strip on the top and bottom. This is from the Patterns and Solids collection. And it is going, that's interesting. That's not pressed down hard enough. Um, it's gonna go on, le on top and bottom. And then we're going to install the last piece. Maybe if I can get it good. There we go. Okay, so each of these, like I said, is one inch and it's about five and a quarter or five inches and it should just slightly fit inside the pocket. There we go. I don't want to cover this whole thing. That's just a waste of paper because the way it opens up, you're not going to see it. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time with my glue today. Making a mess. Oops. Now that's going to show, so I don't care. But there's another example of just putting too much glue. Stop squishing so hard. Okay, now we're going to do the other side. I'm going to start by the middle and go on the outside. And then we'll put it over here. That's my hobby getting home from lunch. There we go. Okay, that looks good. I'm a little closer to the hinge area than I want it to be, but it's still working, so I'm not going to lift it. Okay, so that's it. So the last piece, turn everything right side up. So this last piece is going to be installed. This flange is going to go in the pocket, like so. Then we're going to have this half inch that gets installed on the large flap. Now before I do that, I'm going to close my card. And I want to make sure that the top layer is either equal to or slightly less than what's underneath it. And it's actually extending a little bit too far. So I'm going to trim that down real quick. There we 
Okay, and then I'm going to test it again. That looks pretty good. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, so now what we want to do is find the center here and find the center here. So I'm going to use my Tim Holtz ruler. And we know that the center, this is eight inches, so we know the center is at four. We're going to mark at four. And it's going to get uh, installed on this flap, not below it, but above it. So make sure you put your tick mark above it. And once you get this installed, it should be completely covered up. Okay, now this is seven inches, so this should be three and a half inches. There it is. Okay, so I'm putting the tick mark on the flange on the side that's flush, no score line. So that's the top, that's the bottom. I'm going to line up these two tick marks and install this flap. Or not flap, card. Stay out of the score line as close as you can without going over. Okay, that's our center line. Oops. Oops, I wasn't quite ready. I was just testing to see if it was going to close nice. Oh, that looks a little high. Let's see. Mm. You can tell it's a little bit into the score area, but I think I can make it work. And burnish it down. Okay. Now this one inch piece is going to get tucked into the pocket like so. So then when you close it, it functions just like that, okay? And we've already done this one, so this should be pretty straightforward. Okay, now one of the things that I learned is once I put some designer paper on here, when you went to close it, it was getting hung up. So it's important that the plane on this flange be equal to the plane here. So to raise it to the same level after I just put designer paper here, I added a piece of black cardstock, just a one inch strip to cover this staying away from the score line so that you can continue to open um, the card once once the flap is open. So let's see, I might have one little strip handy. Let's see. Yep. Yeah, it might be a little too wide. Yeah, it's a little bit too wide. So it needs to be just under an inch. Seven. Okay. And then this is seven inches tall. There we go. So it's going to go on. Oh, how did that get so far off? Hold on, let me measure that real quick. That should have been much closer. Hmm. Let me try that one more time. There we go. Yeah, that looks perfect. Okay, now I'm just going to glue this straight on, and it's going to go inside the pocket, so you're not going to see it, so it doesn't need to be designer paper.
Okay. Okay, now that's going to go inside the pocket. Like so. Now we're ready to decorate. Okay, so we got that and that. So this is going to go here. And it's really not directional because there's, is it? Yeah, so we've got some with the red flowers here, some with the red flowers there. So either way, I'm going to dry fit it real quick. It looks pretty darn good. It needs some ink. Looks good. Got a little extra glue here. Okay, we're going to need to brush that down a little bit more. Okay, the last thing is what's going to go on the inside of the card. So I haven't chosen um, the insides yet, so I'll be back shortly with that design choice, and then we'll finish page five. <laughs> 